what's up everyone we are still doing the product review stuff today we got one that I really like to throw at certain times this is the bait this is a bait probably I throw to get some of the hardest fish out there to eat okay this is the bait this is the bait when like I, I'll put it this way rarely do I ever start off throwing this bait and what I mean by that is if I go to the lake or say I've been practicing for a tournament and we're fishing the tournament and now it's like day two or something and it just feels like it's hard to get a bite they're blowing up and missing uh, things aren't going right it, it just seems like heavily heavily pressured fish I'll go to this bait and, and it's happened a lot I probably when I say I figured it out I figured out that this was a deal about six or seven years ago on Gunnersville. Uh, I was fishing the championship on Gunnersville, and the fish became uh, extremely, they were in very, very shallow water, very spooky, crystal clear. I mean, even like, you know how I throw up there, and even when something lands on the water, like they would take off. And I started throwing this bait up there, and it was instant, I started catching. Now. I've been throwing a bait like this for years. I'm for, for as long as I can remember, this is one of the first top waters I ever threw. So let's dive into um, where that was 20 years ago and how it's progressed and how I use it now, okay? What we're talking about is the KVD Splash, okay? That's it right there. Now, this bait is basically the old school pop R, if you want. I would say it started off as the, like the Rebel Pop R, and then it went to, I would say it, it got real trendy when it was the Yellow Magic, okay? And I remember back in the day, like hearing about this Yellow Magic, and it was, whatever it was, $18. I mean, $18 back in the day, right? I mean, it, it was insane what they were charging for a Yellow Magic. And, and I picked one up. Everyone used to talk about how that Yellow Magic would get more bites than other baits like it. Um, what I'll say is this. I don't think it got more bites. I think it was just easier to use. Okay, and I think people threw it a lot and people had confidence in it because of because of the hype, right? Not saying it wasn't good a bait. I threw it, I liked it. But I still caught a lot of fish on that pop bar. And I was going, I just don't see fish eating something that's that's so close to being identical that, that one bait's better than the other. Um, that's what I would say. So, what I'll say is this. I gotta throw something. I always tell people that. They're like, oh, you, you're throwing a Strike King bait. Well, I gotta throw something, right? I mean, it's either this or Yellow Magic or something. So, um, yeah, I, I can't see a difference. And remember, when I do these reviews, and I wanted to let y'all know that, I'm doing reviews right now on baits, baits that I use, baits that I use in tournaments, baits that I have used lately and, and this year. So I'm not like, not yet, but I will go back to baits I've thrown 10 years ago, but I think it's a little bit better that I talk about baits that I'm using now, right, at the moment. So this is a bait I threw at Choke Canyon uh, in the Brandon Belt Championship a couple months ago, maybe a couple weeks ago. I threw it because it was day two, and we needed, it, it started getting really hard to get a bite. If you ask anyone there, you could catch really little ones, but big ones were, big ones, they were getting so much pressure in this one area that, I mean, it was hard to trick one. And that night, the night of day two, and after day one, I was like, man, I'm gonna go do something different on them the next day. So I tied this on and and basically started throwing it, trying to figure out how to get one or two extra bites. So here it is, um, I'm throwing this bait and we ended up catching our second biggest fish on it, okay? Uh, at the time it was our biggest fish. I was like, all right, man, and I, we caught some other ones as well, but it, it instantly showed us that, yeah, man, we can, we can get some of those ones. We were getting blow ups. Everyone was getting blow ups. All, that was the that was the talk around the entire tournament was that they were getting blow ups and missing. And so something real small and subtle, I thought I could throw. Now I wasn't throwing the big one. Okay, I was throwing the smaller one, the Splash Junior. 
which is just a little bit, you know, there's the difference, okay? One's a little bit bigger, one's a little bit smaller. I'll throw that small one. I was going, I actually tied both of them on. I tied a big one and a small one on just to see if it mattered. And I caught that one on the small one. So let's talk about that for a while. Y'all see me throw a lot of, of baits. Like this is, this is a, a sexy dog. I throw it all the time. This is my, basically my top water box. If you can see, I have basically sexy dogs and splashes in there. I can get by with those two top waters. Um, other than like a frog and some other things. I mean, that's literally what I bring around top water fishing. Cause I can do a lot with that. This is my, this is my like aggressive style fishing, right? Fish that I'm gonna call up and I want them to come from a long ways away. They're actively feeding, you know, and, and they're not that spooky. Like I, I want to call them that way. This is not that bait. This is a, this is a bait that I throw where I think fish are literally they're at. They're gonna look at that and go, no, I've seen that. Um, I'm not, I'm a little bit spooky. I'm a little bit sketchy, right? I'll throw this bait in there at them. A lot of times, and I did this show the other day and I'll talk about this, about catching them uh, schooling fish and just fish kind of hanging around right below the surface. They were missing this. Like a lot of times you'll get fish that'll miss those bigger baits when they're schooling because they're, they're schooling on a really small, small bait. That's when I'll throw this as well. I can go with this bait and throw different colors. I can throw a, a bone one, this this Carolina Chrome, a black one. Um, I throw this oyster color a lot. I choose colors on this one. Like I, I'm very diligent about how I choose my color when I'm about to throw. This not so much. Not in a bad way, it's just I'm not throwing anything wild. Chances are I want something kind of subtle and clear. I'm not trying to get them to find the bait. Like usually I'm throwing this and it's, I want it to be subtle. I'm trying to trick them into biting. I'm trying to, while everything else is so loud on the top water and, and bold and flashy and big, I'm trying to get as subtle as possible. That's why I like the small one. Uh, I'm rarely ever popping it. Like I don't pop it. Like the, the days of popping it for me are in the past. I kind of walk this bait more. Um, and so as it's walking, it's popping, but I'm not, I'm not out there like the old school, throw it out there, let blue, you know, and let it sit there and blue. I, I don't do that so much with it. Uh, I, I more or less walk it. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish with that bait. Now, even when fish are going crazy in schooling, like here, uh, I, did a, I did a show the other day, they were missing that bait. They were missing, they were missing this. I could catch some on it. But I was noticing that I would get more, multiple blow-ups before one would eat it. And even then, every once in a while, I'd get seven or eight, nine blow-ups and, and none of them would eat. This I could throw in there and it was instant. Uh, it was instant. They'd blow up on it. Maybe one would blow up on it and then another one would get it. But I, I might have one missed blow-up on a cast. Even, even when they weren't blowing up, there were so many fish out there that I was able to trick them even when they weren't schooling. So just, there was fish around the area and I was able to just throw this out there and, and get bit. And I got bit really, really quick. Now, what's cool about this is you can throw this a long ways, okay? It, it's a subtle, and I would say more subtle, quiet bait is how I was using it. And a lot of baits like that are hard to throw. Not for me, this thing's pretty heavy, right? So I can throw this like on schooling fish. And a lot of times on schooling fish, you wanna be able to throw a long ways. So. I don't mind picking this up. I think I can throw this just as far as I can, that sexy dog, okay? So, would I throw it on? I still got my, my Super Duty 300, okay? Like I said, if y'all know me, I always throw a uh, braid on this. I'm, I, I can throw this on 60 or 50. A lot of people say you should throw it on 30. Um, I've got Sunline 50 on here right now, uh, their plasma. I can throw this a long ways on 50. I don't know why I wouldn't throw it on 50 as opposed to 30. Uh, it's kind of a preference deal. I actually think sometimes the 50 is easier to manage than the 30, uh, especially when you're when you're catching fish. I don't think this hangs as much. I don't think that the line digs down in the reel as much when you catch them. So sometimes the 50 is a little bit easier for me to manage. Uh, 
Now, this is kind of different. I've gone back and forth on rods forever. Um, if I'm gonna throw braid, which I'm going to throw braid on a top one, every single time, uh, uh, on both these. I haven't thrown anything other than braid in probably five or six years, and I don't see me ever going back. I have still a lot of people sit there and say, what, you know, they, they give all these reasons why they don't throw braid. I don't I don't have a see I don't have a single reason why I wouldn't. I, I just don't. Like I said, I can throw it further on this thing. It's not gonna backlash as much. I'm never gonna break off. Okay, I don't have to worry about breaking off. I I, I can leave this braid on here for a year. Even the guys that throw mono, you can't really leave it on there for a year. I can throw this on there for a year and look at it. It looks fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Fish absolutely don't care about a, a bait on top with braids sitting on it. They can't see it. They don't care about that stuff. So, like I said, you're gonna save more money throwing braid because, like I said, you can reel it. You can rig this thing up one time and, and for a whole year, and it's fine. And it's not gonna kink up like mono does and all that stuff. So, throwing braid, straight up polymer knot, nothing out in front, no, no, nothing, no leaders or anything like that. It to me. I can work a bait just fine. I don't need any special knot. I don't need split. I don't need any of that stuff. I can walk this thing. I don't care what anyone says. Um, a lot of people do all that extra stuff because it helps them walk something better. If you get out there and throw this all day, by the end of the day, you're going to be able to walk this thing. It's with any bait thrown on top water. You go do it all day long, you will get really, really good at it. Um, it's really simple. Go do it for two days, but for the rest of your life, you'll be good at being able to walk a bait. So that's what I'll say. Uh, I have it on a Team Lose Signature Series uh, KVD rod. It's it's a spinnerbait target casting. Okay, there's two rods you can throw. I'll throw this one, and and I I have it on this one because I was throwing this as well. Okay, so it's a seven footer. It's 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 not a heavy rod, but you got braid on there. And so, if you notice, I'm not setting the hook, I'm just kind of reeling into them. You rarely ever lose them. It's easy, It's the, the rod's easy to manage, it's easy to cast, it's easy to work. So I don't really want a super long rod, and I'm 6'3". And even me, I don't really need anything over like 7'2". But usually the, the seven foot, seven foot two rods, uh, I, I, I want a lighter action rod uh, just because of the break. Now, I will throw the Thunder Cricket rod. It's seven two. A lot of times I'll throw it for for like the sexy dog, just because it's a little bit bigger, uh, and I'll throw like a little bit bigger rod. But other than that, I, I can get away with this with the spinnerbait target casting rod. I can interchange both those rods with th both these baits. So um, yeah, that's it, it, it's a good bait, guys. It, it catches them. It catches them when a lot of things won't. And like I said, it's not my go-to bait right off the bat because I just don't think about that. I'm Usually when I get to the water, and I would say most of you guys, when you all get to the water, um, it's fairly, usually if you go during the middle of the week or whatever, if you're not fishing a tournament, they're pretty active. And this will still catch them. But I'm telling you, if you get out there and you feel like it should be a top water day and you're just, you're getting misses and things like that, go to this bait. I promise you, you'll see a difference instantly of them not missing it. So, uh, like I said, if you want, check out the description uh, on the video. You can find all, a lot of this stuff. I got links to it. Uh, it'll take you right there. That way, if nothing else, you can at least like double check what I'm talking about and see exactly what bait I'm talking about, what rod. It'll take you right there. Hope this helps, guys. See y'all.